Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys had a great holiday and uh, yeah, straight back into it. I thought I'd pick up where I left off. Um, starting to approach this um, rear um, passenger, right rear right uh, passenger door at the back there. Uh, as you know, all the rusted area. I'll get come in close again and show you. Um, I did talk about switching it out with a 108 door, but uh, a couple of people, Merc Mad in, in particular, pointed out that uh, the frame on the 108 uh, long body car is different on the top. It doesn't have the chrome pieces and it's completely different and that will cause a lot of hassle. So I kind of got to go ahead and repair this one, which is okay. Um, uh, I've had a good think about it and I think I know my pro. So let me uh, show you what I've been doing so far. Let's get the camera in closer. So first things first, I remove the window regulator from up here. That's pretty straightforward. Just uh, three or four bolts hold that unit in. And I reach in underneath and I'll show you what I did. This is the uh, pickup arm. And you want to reach in underneath and release this little catch here at the end. Uh, just a little spring release catch. Pop that guy out. And then you can break this away from the... Uh, the um, window assembly and then wiggle this guy out. I did have to, let me get that back on there so we don't lose it. I did have to loosen the uh, track on this side um, just to move it out of the way to be able to pull the regulator out. So that's that. Then what I did, I removed the diaphragm for the, uh, this is the diaphragm for the uh, central locking system. This is mounted on these two little screws down here. It sits just like that, and then this rod goes up inside the door to connect with the top um, pin latch at the top there. And to pull this out, you have to take the check strap out. Uh, and this is the check strap, two bolts here, one bolt here, just three, it comes straight out. Really nicely, heavily made check strap, look at that can take the opportunity to lubricate that, but that's uh, no mincing around there. Got a really nice design, very heavy, strong spring here. Um, so something I can lubricate now that it's off. So that's that business. So that's the diaphragm off. Again, making sure to label everything because it's going to be some time until this door goes back together. So there's those parts out of the way. Now here's a little guy. This little guy actually broke, but what this is, this sits inside the door about here, right? And then there's a covered plastic piece where all the hose lines and the wires go. And I think that's to stop the window chafing on the wires. It's like a protective plastic, but that broke. So I'll have to find a new one of those. So let's get the, uh, wire brush attachment, see how bad this rust is. Probably goes up to around here. Obviously, this is all gonna need cutting off. What my approach will be, getting all this cleaned off. I'm gonna cut a minimal amount off of here. Okay, right up to that bottom edge there. Just to enable me to get access to this panel. Um, I've got another door to um, replicate this little beaded shape here that goes up to this point uh, then it flattens off so I will uh, cut this back it's what I'm thinking anyway it might change as we go along just see what makes sense um, so cut this back uh, access this make this piece cut that out put our piece in and then reattach this piece because this what this one kind of folds in and attaches to this so it's is extra thick and this is correct I checked the other door but this is missing the second layer here that's why that's a little flimsy and it has another piece that comes in and beefs that up it has a little return lip here to hold the um, uh, weather stripping in I don't think I have to interfere up the top here because I think this is kind of surface so let's have a look what the wire brush reveals okay these, uh, this wire brush attachment isn't quite the, the good one. It's just a straight one. I've got a couple of um, the better ones on order. They've got more of a hook design, but I've worn them out. Um, they last a pretty decent amount of time, but I got this in the interim while I'm waiting for the other one. So let's see what we can get out of here. 
always wear the glasses with these things. Yeah, just all rotted out here. Uh, up here is pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna change this wheel to the stripper wheel. I think that will do a better job than this. This is just not a very good wheel. best I could on this top surface really checking to make sure the rust hasn't migrated to the upper part here and we look pretty good along here see a little bit of pitting there but then the extension piece here is fairly badly rotten here I couldn't get the wheel in there but that's going to get cut out anyway and then there's those holes there you see but next job is to I'm going to take a tracing well actually I don't even need to take a tracing of this because I've got another door um, that I can take um, you know measurements from and tracing so if I cut this bottom edge off right just carefully cut that off there slice that and then that will reveal access to this panel which is in fact actually an <coughs> actual fat three panel so it's this one the extension piece and then the, the 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 front piece here so what i think i may do is repair it like that obviously this is lapped onto that and that's lapped onto that so do this corner first cut this guy out bring it up put this one on then find all that one so um <clears throat> so that shouldn't be too bad actually and then got to replicate these little oval drain holes here as well that shouldn't be too bad i could do that on the bench drill a few holes and then file it out or something you know it's nice that it hasn't migrated around this this uh little radius corner here so i might be able to get away with that just for reference um two inches up from the end of that slight radius there I've put a line all the way across just as a reference point to tell me where the bottom of the door is. Now, it will probably be redundant because I don't think I'm going to cut into the, the fascia board because this is all pretty good metal. I just want to cut away what I don't need. Um, so all of my welds will be on this corner edge here. So I just wanted a reference point. So all the way along so from this side of this line it is bang on two inches to this radius you could have done three inches one inch it doesn't matter but i just decided on two inches to radius anyway let me go ahead and cut that guy off and see where we go i might have let me see maybe run a grinder on there all right i think yeah, let's see how we go. I'll tell you what I did do. I went down to the dollar store. I bought some real cheap glasses with extra powerful lenses in them. See? Not going to wish win any fashion shows with these. Whoops, I broke them already. But only a dollar. But, wow. Okay, so they're, what, 2.5s. Maybe look like Joe 90. Um, let's see. Get those on. Now, I see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. A little screw with just there, but that'll be all right. Not the thing of it. The reason I think this door is rotted out so bad, obviously the drain holes are blocked, but I think they're blocked because some Wally has put this heavy tar stuff down here. See, it's like this goopy stuff, tar. 
Now I don't think that's stock myself. I don't think that's supposed to be in there. I think someone sprayed that in at the bottom thinking they were doing good. Um, and all it did was block up the drain holes and make it a mess because if you see there, there's none of that stuff up there. That looks more, well, it's got some overspray from the respray of the blue, but that looks more factory. This is the sound deadening panel here. But yeah, I reckon someone sprayed in some stuff and blocked the drainage holes. And just like the underseal stuff on the underside of the cars, it uh, it's, makes everything worse instead of just uh, maybe using some of that wax oil or CRC stuff, you know, that wax oily stuff, and then clearing your holes, making sure they're clear, then you're better off. Not this tarry junk. Yeah, that's no good, is it? I'll scrape all that off. That's what... I was getting a lot of smelly burning stuff when I ground this edge off. Right, it's a few days since I was in the shop. Uh, took a few days off uh, after Christmas and uh, have a little break basically. So I've been kind of brainstorming this job. Last, uh, last shoot I did was uh, I cut this strip off. I've got to make this good. I've got a little bit of a high spot here, but we'll deal with that later because this is going to come on um, last. But anyway, so my approach, let me turn the door a little bit, um, but obviously we've got to cut this section out. Now obviously I could cut and do the whole thing in one, overlapping these three sections, but I don't know, there's a, <laughs> uh, there's a voice in me is, uh, no, let's just try and, for a bit of challenge as well, and also to keep it uh, authentic as they built the door, I'm gonna build it in three sections, and it might even help, really breaking it into this panel, this panel, and this panel. Like I say, it's probably unnecessary, but it's just, I don't know, I just want to challenge it, I guess. But anyway, so let me take you over to a green door, a short uh, wheelbase door, but it's uh, the lipping is all the same, so I'll give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. Okay, so as I say, this is a short wheelbase door. It's in really nice shape, actually. Uh, took the... Uh, the weather stripping off here are the drain holes here are these nice little oval uh, holes here now if you come to the end here you can see get that in focus you can see this is uh, an open-ended thing I was a little unsure of but uh, the reason I was unsure is because uh, it had all rotted away and this inner lip had rotted away making this very weak so you can see the inner one comes down hooks round and goes up you see like that and then the outer one just wraps around it and lips over and that's what holds the weather stripping all the way along you see and then as far as the drain holes the drain holes are cut let me get that focus there we go drain holes are cut on the outer lip close to the edge here and you can just see at the top there the inner lip so that allows the water to flow past the inner lip onto the outside lip Okay, so let's it's recreated here. You can see this this open channel area that has got to remain consistent. That doesn't go like that. It, it sits like that. So anyway, so as I say, this is just a two-section door without the extension piece in. But now this gives us a good idea. It gives us a nice profile to copy for for the other one, um, and also this little raised piece here that is copied from this bead roll here so i might just bend that and find a radius piece of metal to bend that over to copy that radius i do have a bead roller but i don't know that that's necessary it's got a little bead there i'll, I'll experiment and fiddle around and see what we can come up with so that's the tail of the tape that's what we've got to recreate so i'm gonna well, let's make up a few, uh, let's make up a, uh, a, a patch for the end piece to get our profile, this little U-turn profile on the inside here and see where we land at. So this is 18 gauge steel. cut a little five inch section off uh, for the other two pieces so a little longer I did six inches and I think I'll, I'll straighten this up on the guillotine 
this thing's a little inaccurate, this uh, cutter, but it gets the job done without that grinding. This will be the piece for here and here, and then it will give me plenty to wrap round. And I cut a bunch off because steel isn't particularly expensive and I can play around with it. Okay, so I've got a piece of steel here. This is the one for the uh, first patch in line and I've got to get that profile. So this is going to have a folded lip approximately, if you can see, to fold round under here. Uh, and then what we need is this uh, this inner shape here. So I'm going to rough it out here, allowing this overlap. So we, I've always, uh, I've got more metal than I need, you see. So I always try and get that profile. Something like that, if you can see that. Right, let's go and uh, see if we can cut that out. I don't know whether I'm going to cut this out with tin snips or not. Because this is 18 gauge steel, I probably can, but and then just sort of shape it, you know, with a grinder or something, make it nice. But I don't have the tools to do a lot of fancy cuts, you know, like band saws and stuff, so I'm just kind of making do. It's not bad actually. A pair of these tin snips, you get uh, the red ones, the green ones, and the yellow ones. The yellow ones kind of useless, really, I find, but uh, the the red and the green ones seem to do the job for the most part. See, got that shape. I'll tidy that up with a grinder. Take that little nubbing off there. Okay, so, see obviously that's the folding bit that we're gonna save, so take a little bit off that corner. I say, remember this is the inside. This isn't this outer one, this is the inside. See that two spot welds there, right there, see? So that will go right there on the inside lip. Take just a tiny more smidgen off that corner and we should be good to go on that. Right, so now what we gotta do, see this is us here we're going down to this corner here. We got to make that bend first. So let's make that little bend, okay? Let's mark that right on the job. I'll move the camera a minute, hold on. Right, allowing, obviously, for this. Get that position right on the outside here. Out there, bends right there. I'm gonna go a little fat just in case rather than going a little small. I mean, this isn't dead vital, this is more like a reinforcement plate here. But uh, let's get that bend done. Gotta make that bend, but we don't want it to be a really, really focus here. Yeah? Don't want it to be a really like sharp bend. It's gotta have a kind of a roll to it. Uh, so I've got this piece of girder thing, I don't know what it is where I've found it, but it's got a nice radius curve here. Uh, and I did a little test piece here, and it, I mean, you can see that it's got a gentle roll, you know, rather than a real snappy, sharp roll, and that matches very nicely to that uh, inner lip there. So we're going to go with this to roll over, okay? So I've just got to find a piece of metal to sandwich it on, put our mark right in the center of that radius there, and I've just got to find a piece of metal to clamp down on that, and we'll tap that guy over. I've got some of this. Uh, Angle iron, not particularly thick stuff, I know it's a quarter inch or something like that. Uh, but uh, that's got a nice sharp edge uh, to clamp down on there. And also you can use this sharp edge to recreate nice 90 degrees. It's got a rolled edge here, you can just play around. And also it clamps well to the, vi uh, to the bench. Then we can make our 90. Try not to, just gentle taps. try and do it all in one. The sound will change once you hit that back, back form. 
you don't want to go bashing on it too much after that because you'll sort of uh, stretch the metal, you see. So. All right, so that's that bit there, basically. It's difficult for me to get it in there, but you get the idea. So that follows that inner flange. Yeah, that copies that quite nicely, actually. So then now, next one we got is this one going back up again, you see. Very similar like approach like woodworking patches. You don't want to go chopping out all your metal until you've made your patch. Um, luckily, we've got this door to compare to, to work it. But uh, even then, you want to kind of get your patch as close as possible before you go chopping metal out. Uh, well, that's the way I would do it anyway, so... Let's uh, get the distance this way correct. Well, our next bend is going to be there. See, that's our next roll. Okay, so that's got to be bent up this way. We've got to find something to bend it over, haven't we? I think this is too wide. I cut a piece of 5 8 uh, wood. This is oak. Perfectly strong enough to bend around. I put a little radius edge on this with the plane just to kind of copy that radius. So let's try and bend this second bend. help that with our hands a bit so you can see what we're getting here now see there we go see goes up here that'll get bent over just a little bit because we've got a little rust hole at the top here i want to take care of right up there so we'll only bend over just i don't know a quarter inch right or so. okay i made that second bit well one two third bend i should say so that's going to go just there you see so we're getting close. Right, so I've cut this little piece off here, stepped it down so we, and made a little relief cut here so I can fold this across that line and that'll be tucked in here for a spot weld through to that flange. And then I'm just gonna leave this for extra waste to do what I will with. So that's pretty much that patch made up. Okay, so there's the flange bent over, ready for the spot welds. Uh, left plenty of waste at the top there to cut back. Uh, looks pretty good. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. So let's transfer this over and see whether I'm going to cut this in and then start building this way. Normally, as I say, it's best to make your patch first. This is the prime patch, you know, the starter. This is the most important area, I feel. So I think if I get this uh, on, everything will build from this quite nicely. So this guy is going to go in there. I think what I'm going to do after a cup of tea, I am going to make a cut just above this rust hole line here. I'm going to cut into this. This is a pretty blank piece, so we've got all our reference points off of this. This is a bit easy, so I'm going to cut and get rid of this, get that out of here, get that welded in as our base point, and then we'll proceed down the rest of the door. The next challenging piece will be this little curvature here. I could quite easily do a Boom, 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 you know. But I want to try and create as close as possible to what we had before. Um, and also this will only will be cut along here. I'm not going to go to this edge because this is perfectly good. Uh, I don't see any reason to go all the way up there. Just make my spot weld line all the way along here where it can be hidden underneath. All right, let's go and have a cup of tea. Okay, I started cutting it with the little... Uh, reciprocal saw but that's not particularly best one so I'm just gonna cut it with the grinder uh, cut into here chop it out see what we got I held back a little bit because I'm not sure you know how far up uh, obviously we're gonna cut this one up here but just to get this bit of metal out of the way see where we're working at so we've got three spot welds here that's better. Get rid of that guy. I could cut along there, get rid of this piece, save this little tab here, I think. It's got a double layer there. That's something to weld to as well. So let's just... Uh, Put 
take a little off that corner there. And this patch only comes to about here. But I'm going to chop that out but save this because I don't want it to interfere with this section down here. So I'll just do a little step cut here. And then this guy can overlap it, you see. You can see it stops. Let me get this glove off. Stops just here. Okay, so one area I did mess up, not a big deal, but see these spot welds here, they're a lot further into the flange uh, than I realised, and so I didn't leave enough flange material, so when it comes it misses it, see? But it's not a biggie, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a heat sink behind these holes, fill those holes up with weld, and then re-punch three little uh, spot, spot holes further this way. Just enough to fill the holes and then I'll grind those suckers up and we'll re-punch some new ones. mark where the next punch holes are going to be, the spot welds. We know our plan properly there. See, that's our flange. So we'll get one up there. Like that, three holes. Now, punch those guys out. I've got one of these hole punches now you can obviously drill these but this makes it a lot easier and uh, these aren't expensive I mean, you don't have to buy a ridiculously expensive one I think only about $30 something like that so let's get that hole punch there you go see nice clean hole Get one down there. There you go, nice three little holes. Might drill a hole there, because we want to spot weld that. Just going to clean up uh, behind where this weld's going to be. And then this is good for getting into little areas, you know, I'm going to clean this back panel up with some of the rust and then I'm going to copper prime this, all the areas where, uh, you know, it's bare metal that's going to be welded up and then it's going to get some, uh, I'll spray some rust encapsulator in it and I might even get some of that wax oil stuff pumped into the door. Certainly don't want all that heavy bitumen type stuff because that's what caused this in the first place. So let me clean that guy up. Right, while that copper primer's drying off, uh, I'm going to cut shy of this line. Now, I haven't cut as much as I need to cut off here, but uh, I'm just holding back from that corner. So here's that chunky out there. So let me show you what we've got going on here. Okay, I think you can see that. See all that, all that gunk, see? All that was powered in there. Someone trying to stop rust, but ended up causing it. You know, it was all sticky. It was all in a channel there. So real thick stuff it is. Tarry crap, but see? Another reason not to use that, it's definitely not in corners, you know, where it can build up like that, you know. Better off with just a good paint, I would imagine. So, I'm keeping the holes clear. So you can see, oh, there we go, look. You can see the little step design in it. Now, 
I'm thinking I could do that just by bending it over a radius. I was thinking I might have to bead roll that, but I don't think so. I think a little bend, another bend, and another bend. I don't think that'll be too bad. So, all right. That'll give me the opportunity to clear all this crap out there. Hopefully you can see that. I've just got some wax and grease remover to remove all the filth and grease that's inside this door. Then I can give it a bit of a key sand and treat it. I might even shoot some copper primer in there, you know. Bloody great tool for getting in all the tight areas. Now, underneath here, I'm going to cut this back a little more, but I'm going to hold on it just yet until I figure a way of dealing with this corner. We're going to get this patch in, in and then this one, and then we'll deal with this. But um, in the meantime, I'm going to spray some rust treatment in there, in that tight corner, you know, and that could be cooking off while we decide what's uh, what's the best approach. I'm use some of this Permatech stuff in here for this back corner over here. Like I say, I might cut a lot of this out anyway, but. Just till we decide what we're doing. I think this video is going to get pretty long, so this video is going to have to be broken into a, a couple at least. So anyway, you can see this is very close to 90 here, but this flares up slightly. So that's just a question of tapping this flange of mine to copy that as close as possible, bearing in mind we're tack welding it on this piece, not this piece. Uh, this is the piece that's going to wrap over that, cover that, and go down, you see. So we're concentrating on levelling to this one here, not this one. Trying to make sure it's level as possible. Okay, you can see what I've done. I've got a piece of steel here, kind of bent steel, so it's kind of springy. So it can push on that little tab upwards. And I put this screwdriver in to give it an extra, extra poop. And I can hopefully get a little rosette weld in on that little spot there. It's a little tight, but I think we'll do it. And that's got it. There you go, that little spot there. I'll get that sanded up. Uh, and so then all we've got to do now is spot weld these guys in and then we're good to go on that patch So we're able to get a little compression on this top one here. I'll move the clamp down To, to get us a nice tight bond there on the spot weld Made a bit of a pickle of that one That's my own fault that right? is not paying attention Put a couple of spots there. Didn't have the camera recording. <laughs> so anyway, I've jumped ahead a bit. Here is this next piece. Gonna make this first bend. I've got that first curve here that wraps over here. Um, this one will obviously have to be chopped out here, but that's not a big deal. Um, now, I'm going to try, let's see, let's use a straight edge to bring my line over. This will tell me, I'll move that along. this will tell me where the bottom of this flange is that it needs to lap onto. I'll get that right at the top there. Get a straight edge on that. That'll do. Tells me where that is, you see. Then we can tell where the bottom of that flange is. 
then we can make our bend along there you see I've jumped ahead a little here I'm working on the second patch and I'm working to fold the final inner channel flange here now when I'm using wood on certain pieces when there's certain thicknesses you can have the grain going long ways but once they start getting a little thinner it's best to run the grain this way the wood form is a lot stronger this way because uh, the, the form itself could have a tendency to break along the grain you see so all you do is just uh, have it going this way and there's no way you're going to break that um, so just working on this final flange hopefully I got this right I messed up one actually off camera uh, my flange was a little narrow so I had to widen the form a little bit Right, here's the next patch, a little tricky. Uh, main problem is to get the relationship of this top edge down to the channel to make sure everything hits at the right position. I'm a little short at the top here, but I'm gonna be able to fill that in with some careful tack welds and just blend it in. Uh, I just wanted this as far down into this channel as possible. Um, this guy disappears under this one, so this one will come over there. I can spot weld along here uh, do a little rosette weld here and here and here and then fill this in with weld. Okay, so that was a little bit of a pain to put that in but um, it, uh, to, to get everything lined up from the top to the bottom inside this channel I did have to show you what I did. I was a little short. just want to make sure that you know all the little ups and downs but I was a little short inside this channel so what I did I, I kind of got into it so I forgot to film, but anyway, so I put this piece of wood here for consistency for my gap, protected it under here, and then just worked it, just went along and just worked my way, pressing that in, like stretching the metal into that deep pit there because it was a little short, and then I put my spot weld here, Spot weld, spot weld, locked it in, welded on here. So we're all good now. This I'm not welding because this obviously this plate comes in next. Uh, but I'm not doing that tonight because this is taking a little longer than I was expecting. But uh, yeah, it's coming along. Here's the old bit. Well, this is the outer bit actually that will be going on there, you see, for the final skin. So we're doing pretty good and here this little bit here is that bit this tiny little jump and then the drain holes as I keep saying are on this side uh, so a little bit more challenging than I was expecting but it wasn't too bad really when you break it down biggest challenge was getting this to this the orientation correct you know uh, this one I'm not going to worry about it because all I've got is the lower channel and then a straight cut so I don't have to worry about this rolled edge um, so anyway okay so this is part one of welding the door up I thought I was going to do it all in one but certainly not there's too much to cover and um, hope you don't mind these videos taking a little longer than I was expecting I just like to cover all the things I um, bump into um, so this went pretty well this one it was like the second one to make sure it was orientated correctly was the tricky one um, I've still got, I've got a little bit of a raised point there, which I think I can take down with the old planishing hammer. Just, just gently tap that down to say this is behind the panel, so it's not, not crucial or anything. Uh, but, um, and obviously if you're doing a shorter door, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be having this, just this one and then this one. So, um, thanks a lot for watching guys. Look out for the next one in this series and I'll get the main part on here, flip it over and then put the bottom edge on and drill those uh, drain holes out. So thanks again guys, happy new year to everyone and I'll see you in the next one, take care.